Has Apple finally replaced the iMac Pro? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So today, like today, earlier this morning, Apple refreshed their iMac 27 inch line. No, they did not replace the iMac Pro. However, they did give us some functionality and some options that I would absolutely recommend over that iMac Pro, which is, you know, why we had the clever introduction. Uh, so what we're gonna do today, let's hop right into it and see which ones they got, like what are our options, what like upgrade path do we have, and are they worth buying? And which one, spoilers, I did, I did pre-order one. Which one did I pre-order, and which one would I recommend that you pre-order prior to us, like if you have to have one like this second. So let's get to it. Hey, we're on apple.com, hooray! Finally some new Apple hardware. So yes, it is the Mac 27 inch. Now, if you don't know this, I spent two years using an iMac Pro as like my video editing computer here on the channel. And I, it was a business lease, like I couldn't, as a brand new YouTube channel, I could definitely have not afforded a, an iMac Pro uh, on what we were making here. But so I spent two years with a business lease on one. It's actually up here in a couple of days. And so I'm looking at getting a new computer and the iMac refresh is something that I am very, very interested in. So what do we have? So there are three tiers, like there's three segments that we can go with. Now I do think, I don't have any like insider knowledge or I don't, I think it's pretty like obvious that Apple is saving like the iMac refresh redesign for their new like ARM based computers that should come out later this year, sometime next year. So it is, they do look very similar to, you know, last year's model, which that's not necessarily a bad thing. The screen, the 5K screen on these iMacs, Mm. Okay, so the base model comes in at $1,799. You get a 3.1 gigahertz, six core, 10th generation i5. That's not bad. It can turbo boost up to 4.5 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of RAM. Eh, we'll see what we can upgrade that to. 256 gigabyte of solid state drive. I mean, it's nice to see that if you look across the lineup, there is no more fusion drive, so you don't have to worry about like I mean, come on, when's the last time you really wanted your like main hard drive on a computer to be a spinning drive? Maybe you do, I don't know, I certainly don't. I'm a big fan of solid state drives. Not a big fan of 256 gigabyte for a desktop computer, especially not at $1,799. You do though get a Radeon Pro 5300, two Thunderbolt 3 ports and you do get that Retina 5K display. How can we spec this bad boy out? We're gonna need to spec it out. So for $500, you could get the nano texture glass. That's, if you know the XDR monitor, I certainly don't, I've never messed around with one, but it's just that like coating on it to give it a more matte like non-reflective pro look to it. Um, I don't know that I would spend the 500 bucks on that. I'm perfectly fine with the glossy displays like on the MacBooks. Uh, you can spec this out all the way up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. Don't, unless you know you need that, don't, don't do that. 10 gigabyte ethernet, that's okay, that's a legitimate thing. I am very excited to see that. And so you could get the base model for $4,900, don't do that. Let's move on to the next one. You cannot upgrade the storage, you cannot upgrade the CPU on the base model. So the middle tier, 3.3 gigahertz six core processor, probably the same processor, just clocked a little bit higher. Still i5, turbo boost up to 4.8 gigahertz, still with eight gigabytes of RAM standard. Mm. 512 gigabyte storage, which I would probably say like, that's the lowest. I would say one terabyte of storage is what you need for a desktop computer. But if you had to push me 512, okay, that's the lowest I would go. You still get the 5300 Radeon Pro and all the other things, but can we upgrade this middle tier? Okay, we still get the $500 nano texture. Okay, you can take this up to a 10 core i9 processor. That's a legitimate increase. Uh, you can still take it up to 120 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, you can increase the storage on this one up to two terabyte, and you can still get the 10 gigabit ethernet for $5,700. I still would not, I would still would say don't do that. Don't do that. So let's see, Gary, if you're saying no to all this stuff, let's check out the top model. The top model is a 3.8 gigahertz, eight core processor, with it's an i7. So this is the first time we're seeing a legitimate upgraded processor in one of the base models. Eight gigabytes of RAM. So what this is telling me, and I'm hoping that like last year's model, you can upgrade the RAM yourself, hopefully. We'll verify that when we get one of these in the studio ourselves, because eight gigabytes, that's just not enough. For $2,300, eight gigabytes of RAM, that's, that's, a, that's a deal breaker uh, for me. Still 512 gigabytes solid state drive. Radeon Pro 5500 XT graphics card. That's a legitimate graphics card. Two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Now how can we spec the top of the line out? Nano texture glass, they definitely put that right on top. Uh, you can still get the i9. That's a good, i9s are, are good processors, especially for desktops. Uh, up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. 
You can go up to a Radeon 5700 XT with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can go up to an eight terabyte solid state drive for $8,300 if you spec this thing all the way out. Now, okay, back to the beginning of the video where I said, hey, the iMac Pro, you know, did they release it? Did, yeah, it was a fun, we had fun. We had, I had fun. I don't know if you had fun. Um, but I do think that this top of the line with that i9 is really something that I would recommend. Like if I were buying an iMac today, and I did buy an iMac today, but if I were buying an only computer, there's no way that I would recommend an iMac Pro to you today. The way that I would spec this out, maybe I could see an argument for the middle tier. I do not recommend the lower end in any way, shape. For $1,799, you can get so much more out there. So I do not recommend that. If I'm buying this Mac as my only machine, I definitely take the i9 processor. You can never like always get the best processor that you can afford. If I'm going with RAM, I'm gonna give you two options here. One, if you can't upgrade it at all, I would go with the 32 gigabytes of RAM. 32 gigabytes is really the sweet spot when it comes to productivity machines. I'm not gaming. Unless you have a very niche need for more than that, uh, I have 32 gigabytes on this and it runs Photoshop, Final Cut Pro, all of my tabs on Safari, everything at the same time. That's plenty of memory. If I'm going for graphics card, I'd probably go with the Radeon Pro 5700. Eight gigabytes of DDR6 memory is phenomenal. And I'd go with the one terabyte solid state drive and the 10 gigabit ethernet. That's a, if you're gonna get into like big moving files or you're gonna try to set up a network, 10 gigabit ethernet, you kinda gotta go with that. And so that is a grand total of $3,900. And that is expensive, like that's an expensive machine. Now in Windows PC land, if you take that $3,900, you can get an awful, I mean, you can get crazy power. That's what, like about a Threadripper build? Like you may not be able to buy the top of the line Threadripper, but you can get some serious cores, some serious horsepower for $3,900. But it's not a, I know this is gonna make me sound like a fanboy, but Apple, when you're buying Apple computers, the specs are not really what you're buying. The way that these computers are really optimized to work with their own software and things like that, you have to take the specs at a grain of salt and you are gonna pay a little bit of an Apple tax for stability, ecosystem, and some of these pro level functionalities that you're not gonna get on a Windows machine. I use both, I totally get it, and I know that's gonna make me sound like a 100% fanboy and you're like, Gary, Wait, of course you're gonna say that. You're an Apple guy. You're doing this video on an Apple uh, laptop. I totally get it. I totally get it. This is an expensive machine. I would recommend this is if you can upgrade your own RAM, uh, definitely do not get, definitely go with the eight gigabytes of RAM. And then you can buy a cheaper set and you know, buy as much as you want at that point and then upgrade it as you see fit. We will, again, like I said, we will double check that when we actually get the Mac here in the studio. The one that I bought, um, I just bought the base model of this top tier. So I bought the one, with the 5500 XT, the 512 gigabyte solid state drive, I kind of regret not getting the gigabyte ethernet, but you know, that is where we are. Uh, so yeah, so this is the one that I pre-ordered. Hopefully it'll be here Friday and we can make all sorts of great videos for you. What are some things that you would like to see about the iMac 27 inch? Obviously we'll compare it to the MacBook Pro. We'll make all sorts of cool videos, but what would you like to see? Leave a comment below. And if you had to pre-order one, but you're kind of like waiting for it to show up and you you wanna see what other options are out there. Here's a video about the MacBook Pro 16 six months later that you should probably watch by clicking right here. Go ahead, click. It only takes like 10 minutes to watch. Definitely watch this video. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.